Good afternoon. My name is Marie Fumagalli, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to Mass today. We extend a warm welcome to anyone who might be visiting with us or to those who are new to our parish. In the spirit of Christian fellowship, please turn to those near you or maybe to someone that you do not know or someone alone and extend a warm welcome. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. Brothers and sisters, we are all sinners. We all have dark places in our lives that must be open to God's light and grace. This might seem hard. For some, it might even seem impossible. But God is always there with his grace and his light. So let us today pray that we become people of light and of grace and of love. And may we respond wholeheartedly to all that God continues to give us. The celebrant for today's liturgy is Father Valentine. And this Mass is being offered for Rudy Palumbo, Irene Fucarnio, Violetta Garcia, Donald Rizzi, Mary Plasek, George Carter, Father Bob McGuire living, Richard Quinn and his family living. Infidelity to infidelity. 
practicing all the abominations of nations, including the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his message to them. For he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place, but they mocked the messages of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burned the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all the palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love that he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast, for we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. It's the greatest feast, more than the Christmas. The Easter is very, very important. And we should be rejoicing. We all should be rejoicing. Because the vaccines are coming up now. We are getting the vaccine. I'm so happy I got my vaccine. I feel so good. 
and vaccine is available slowly to the people. Nearly 30-40% of people have received the vaccines. How do they feel? They feel great. We rejoice because our days of social distance are going to get over. The soon the mask will be over. Soon we will start our normal life. Gathering, eating, drinking, celebrating the parties, everything. It gives us some kind of hope. And it's just nice. So we should rejoice. And hopefully, maybe end of this year, we'll be back to our normal life. Our churches will be back. Children will be going back to the school. We'll be at the beach. So that's hope. This is where we are. Yes, my friends, life is a mystery. To sometimes understand mystery is very, very challenging. I was talking to one of the girls today. She's in 12th grade. And she's looking with the colleges. And she got a scholarship with a couple of schools, she got it. First she wanted to major into psychology. But suddenly she changed her mind. She says, well, I want to do the criminology. I said, what drives you to be criminology? Well, I watch these programs and television, the mysteries, like the mysteries of some series, uh, serials. So she was, she was watching, and that's what driven her interest. I said, well, good for you. Good for you. Last Sunday, Nearly 70 million people sat down on the television and were watching opera show with Megan and her husband Prince Harry. The mystery, what they're going to talk about it, what they're going to share about it. I don't know how much true, how much false, how much stories. I do not know. I don't get into it. Because my life itself is a mystery. Am I right? Everybody has a mystery. Sometimes you get to think, oh, that person looks very weird. He's a mysterious guy. So this is what we think about it. And sometimes I make people sit down and talk about it. And when I sit down, you begin to realize what this mystery is. What this mystery is. How we judge, how we look at it. Yes, Bibles are full of mysteries. People are looking for, to solve these mysteries. The Noah's Ark we heard just a couple of weeks back. Noah's story. With the Noah's boat, it must be a huge, gigantic boat. Because there were all kind of birds and animals who were there. Nobody knows where this boat is landed. Whether we can able to find the peace. People are still looking, going into the mystery. Will they find it? I do not know. There is another mystery in the Bible. We hear the tablets, the Ten Commandments God gave to Moses. And that showed God's presence. Forty years in the days are those people carried those tablets. Where they go? Where they are? Where they were destroyed? Or they missed the hidden somewhere? We had no idea. And today we hear in the first reading. And the gospel talks about it. The snake on the bronze pole. Because people had turned away from him. God was upset. And he said, said the serpents among them, they started biting. And Moses was told, raise the bronze serpent. Now whoever looks at it is beaten up. We'll look at it, we'll be saved. But what is it looking at me? That wasn't like a mystery or some magic. Say that you are repented, you will change, and you will be saved. And that's where the gospel comes about it. God so loved the world that is given only son. Whoever believes in him and will have eternal life. Yes, that's the one who was raised up on the cross, Jesus Christ. And that's what we talk about it. Look at him. We look at him, that shows God's ultimate love for the mankind. But at the same time, we look at him with repentant heart. Lord, we want to change. This is my sense. This is my mystery of life. Have mercy upon me and save me. Yes, today, let us bring all our crosses, no matter what the crosses we have, with the small or the bigger, whatever the crosses, whatever the form they come into your life. The hurts, the suffering, loss of our loved ones, the sicknesses, financial problems, the problems of the marriages, problems with our children, loss of our, your spouse. Right now, the process of the coronavirus of fear, bring it to Jesus. 
and walk with him. Because only Jesus, our crosses, will be lighter. So just a many days, let's look at the cross. It's a God's powerful sign to the humanity. That's where Jesus was crucified. But that was not the end. From this cross, we have the resurrection. That ultimate given the hope to the humanity. Amen? Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered a conscious fire, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God our Father, as you celebrate the love you have bestowed on your people, we confidently make our prayers to you. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. In today's Gospel, Jesus makes it clear to us that we should live our lives in the light of truth, honesty, and transparency. We pray for the grace and wisdom to be just, honest, and truthful in all our dealings with others, particularly with the weak, the innocent, and the vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Lentar Sunday, we rejoice and are thankful that we have chosen for eternal life by a loving Father who even in this world has bestowed on us so many wonderful gifts. We pray that we be worthy of God's promise of everlasting glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church community of ongoing reconciliation, healing, and forgiveness, for Pope Francis on the anniversary of his election, and for those preparing for baptism and full communion in the church, especially our own Lisa Marie Zedkopf, Samantha Lip, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With Pope Francis, we pray that this Lent we fast from selfishness and be compassionate, that we fast from grudges and be reconciled. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, as they seek to live the ways of love and forgiveness and witness to the new life of Jesus, for those blinded by earthly riches and ambitions, and for reconciliation and peace among peoples who hold ancient hostilities. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our for the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, especially Phil Roski, Roy Edbuna, Ed Thornson, Sr., Anne Mascarelli, Marianne Richland, Naomi Fonseca, Marian Salenza, Lenny Schroeder, Jan Schatzberg, Carl Smitelli, and for those who have died this year of the coronavirus throughout the United States, for our own parishioners who have died at the Lord, namely Mary Placic, Violetta Garcia, Betty Chiaffo, Francis Vignola, Elena Aloca, Irene Fugarino, Donald Rizzi, and for all who mourn, we pray to the Lord. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions. And this Mass being offered for Rudy Palumbo, Irene Fukurino, Donald Rizzi, Mary Placic, Violetta Garcia, George Carter Living, Father Bob McGuire Living, Richard Quinn and Family Living. We pray
pray to the Lord. Every night at around 8.45 p.m. I get a call from Father Bob McGuire, who was running the Life Center and pretty his birthday, 93 years. I told him I'm going to pray for him. This morning I called him, I wished him and sang happy birthday. He was very happy, so please pray for him. And also pretty his birthday, I was married and selling that too. Uh, Bob and historian, pastor associate, to pray for our good health. Hail Mary, the praise the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thy arms, amen. Blessed is the blood of Jesus. Holy Mary, I love thy God. Pray for our sinners, now and the hour of our death. You are given this prayer card to St. Joseph. So let us pray together. Take out your card and we say, Are ready? Hail, guardian of the Redeemer. Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to your God entrusted his only Son, in you many place our trust, with your Christ the King Man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a Father, guide us in the path of life, obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Your death, O Lord, and profess your 
the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation and giving thanks that we are held worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring out the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And this afternoon we remember Rudy Colombo, Irene Bucarino, Donna Wilson, Mary Classic, Violeta Garcia. And all your life in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most cherished spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, including Saint Pius the Ten, our patron saint, Saint Agnes, Padre Pio, Saint Teresa Catherine, Saint Francis, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co heirs in eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through our Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, for God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please rise. Let us pray to the Father of all mercies for the coming of the kingdom among us. And so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord, thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. Lead us from temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from, from evil deeds, especially when we love darkness rather than light. We know that you are with us even in the darkness. Let your kindness always shine on us as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, Lord Jesus Christ, who you make a difference. Those who do what is true come to the light. Look not on our blindness, but on the faith of your mother church, and grant the peace and unity of your kingdom for live forever and ever. And yeah. let the peace of loving compassion, Jesus, be with you all. Yeah. Blessed are those who make peace. They shall be called sons and daughters of God. We make in the name of Christ and share his own peace. Peace be with you. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My dear family, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. And prayerfully, we all can say together, Lord, I am unworthy, for My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself only to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Our second collection this weekend is a special diocesan collection for Catholic Relief Services. This year, annual Socks of Love project to serve the homeless of Long Island will be undertaken by our 7th, 8th grade faith formation youth as a part of the confirmation retreat. 
travel size, toiletry, salts are needed. For more information, please check the bulletin or visit our parish website. Make a rental commitment to help save a life. There is an emergency shortage of blood available in our blood bank. The St. Pythoten blood drive will be held on Good Friday, April 2nd from 12 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. in Madonna Hall. Help us reach our parish goal of 150 points. Please consider donating. It takes a little less than an hour to save our life. On December 8, 2020, Pope Francis, in a new apostle letter entitled Patris Corde, with a father's heart, described St. Joseph as a beloved father, a tender, loving father, an obedient father, an accepting father, a father who is creatively courageous, a working father, a father in the shadows. Each month we will have a reflection of St. Joseph in the bulletin. On March 19, we celebrate the feast of St. Joseph. I am incredibly grateful to Nancy Chirano, one of our parishioner, young girl, young, young man woman, whose beloved father named Joseph Durante passed away from COVID-19 COVID the last month for providing this month's reflection. Is there anybody in this uh, gathering, in this worship community, named Joseph, or Giuseppe, or Jose, whoever it may be, please rise. Anybody has a name, Joseph, or sponsor me. Or maybe you are a carpenter, you can stand. <laughs> I was a carpenter, by the way. My father was a carpenter. So, I was in that awful summertime. So I used to work over there. So I consider a carpenter's son, like my boss, carpenter. <laughs> so I would like to congratulate you and we pray for you, alright? Okay, so you are here, so be good, alright? <laughs> we hope you like it. We are grateful to Pat Crow and Wagner Funeral Home for preparing uh, our year of St. Joseph prayer card. Prayer cards are available at the doors of the church. Saturday, the 19th. Annual St. Patrick and Golf Outing will be Monday, June 14. This year we are honoring the memory of Michael DiCarlo, a long time parishioner, beloved friends, and devoted supporter of our annual golf outing. For more information, please check the bulletin. Don't forget to change your clock, especially I have to change it because I have to get up for the mess in the morning, 7 o'clock. So, so make sure that you change your clocks. Uh, Easter flowers, you're going to donate for your loved ones, please. Uh, and those are available to the same candles. If somebody wants to dedicate the Paschal candle in loving memory of your loved ones, please do so and call in the rector office. We'll be happy to help you out. Uh, nice of Columbus Monday food drive will be this weekend. So try to support them whatever way you can as you have been doing it. Our second collection next weekend is the support of the Vincent de Paul Society. And it's wonderful to see uh, last week, last weekend, this weekend we had uh, our second graders. We had a retreat with them and they did such an amazing job. It's a wonderful job. So talking to them, explaining to them what they were going to receive. I told them, like your mother, when she carried you, it was, uh, you had a bridal shower. When your mother was married, she had a bridal shower. And today was your first Holy Communion shower. So what do you want? So they said, uh, uh, I want happiness for my family. I was the healing of the world. I want the joy. I want happiness. I said, okay, that's that. So we put together on the, uh, on the first week communion. But I want something else also because I'm the one doing the communion. I want something. You invite me for the party, and I will come with a big bag, and all the presents will be for me. So they said, oh, no, 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 12 o'clock onwards till 1.30 it was a busy day. But it was just nice, we were trying our best. So families came out, it was nice to tell you whether they can really consider That's all about a key related journey. It's not fasting, praying now, baby. Go for the reconciliation. When you get a chance, people, please do that. Go for reconciliation. Don't come to me because I charge you a credit card. So <laughs> you'll find the cashes nearby. <laughs> uh, that's all we have. So please stand for a grand blessing. We have to invite uh, Claudia. Claudia and Claudia. Claudia. Let us pray. O God, we like everyone who comes into this world. Eliminate our hearts, we pray. Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace. 
that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. We are just to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of the God be upon us and our families and our parish, our sick world, our divided world, and also our wounded church. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love God, love others, make disciples, and restore all things in Christ. Amen. Have a great evening, everyone.